All right. I mean, there's so many things that we can do now that we have now that we have planes that we're creating and, and we're totally in control of, of the script that's doing that. We understand each line of code in it. Uh, what, what, what one of the things I suppose we could do is is combine what we were working on a, a bit earlier with the uh, with the touch input of you know like sh shooting these cubes into space. What we could do is actually make a bit of a game of that. See how many cubes you could stack up. You know, a bit of a tower stacking game. Um, so yeah, let's jump jump right in and do that. There's there's only a, there's only one extra script we're going to add, and we're going to modify the surface script just a little bit, and yeah, as well as creating just a prefab. So we'll start off with a prefab of this cube that we're going to be creating. Okay, we just uh, you have to call it cube, I suppose. Okay, we can go to point one point. You can change the size. I was thinking that changing the size to like uh, to random values might be a really interesting way to go. You know, you never know what the sort of like what your next what your next hit would be. You have to anticipate it somehow, like a Tetris kind of three D version or something. Okay, yeah, so we can just add a rigid body to this to make sure it's got physics, it's going to fall down. Um, the mass we might want to turn down a little bit, especially if it's going to be so small. So why don't we put the mass down to 0.1? It'll be a bit more realistic, the way that they collide with each other and the impact that has. Okay, and now we're just going to create an input manager. Uh, okay, what the input manager is basically going to do you're just going to say, okay, every time I hit the screen, if I if my hit uh, was on a plane, then just above that plane, let's drop a cube down. Just one way of getting the, you know, getting the bit of this functionality going. First of all, we're going to need the prefab for that cube. So we'll say game object, uh, cube prefab. Okay, and now we're just going to say for each um, t in touches, uh, input dot touches. Okay, that's going to return at any given point what fingers are down on the on the screen. Okay, and we're going to say if it hasn't just been pressed down, then we don't want to worry about it because we don't want to like you know you know like a thousand cubes as you're pressing. I mean, maybe you do, but yeah, for now we won't. So we we'll just say uh, if uh, t dot phase is not equal to uh, what is it? Uh, touch phase. Touch phase. Oopsie daisy. Touch phase dot uh, began, then we'll just return. Oh, no, sorry, we'll continue. Just in case you got a few fingers down. Um, returning would get out of the for each loop, continue will just go into the next touch in that, yeah, in, in this in this group of touches. Okay, so now all we're gonna do is we're gonna say Q pre prefrag, uh, prefrag, prefrag, just um, create a new one. Uh, what we're gonna do is also we're gonna assign that to a variable so that we're able to like change the color of it. And, and whatever else we want to do, if we wanted to change the change the size of it, this would be the point where we would do it. But we'd say game object dot instantiate cube prefab. Okay, the position will be. Um, oh yeah, the, the position will be from a ray, right? So we need to actually get a ray to find out where exactly you've touched the uh, the, the plane. So how we can do that is we can say var ray equals uh, camera dot main dot screen point to ray okay and the point is going to be the t the point on the screen that the touch was so we say t dot point oh t oh, t dot position sorry okay and yeah okay so now we've got the ray we're gonna to have to create a hit info so ray card our uh, ray cast hit hit info that we're gonna pass into our ray cast okay and we'll just say if uh, physics physics dot ray cast Okay, ray and out hit info. Okay, so it's going to send out. Uh, it's going to we're, we're passing in the hit info and it's going to send out all the information that we need. Okay, so if that's true, make sure this instantiation is inside that if statement. Okay, if that's true, then we say uh, we're going to instantiate this cube. And the the position of the cube will be the position of that ray cast hit plus. Uh, vector three dot up, right? So we're just above that ray cast hit. So we say uh, hit info dot point. Okay, the point of impact plus vector three dot up. Okay, cool. And for rotation, we'll just do uh, identity, but you could like put random rotation in. Might be an interesting uh, difficulty setting or something. Okay, dot identity. 
Okay, and the last thing we'll do before we get out of here is just change the color every time that we do it. So how can we, how we can do that? Just go to get component uh, mesh renderer. Okay, dot uh, material dot color equals random dot color hsv. Okay, and yeah, oh that that was my format on save. Sorry if that was a bit uh, disorientating. Just make sure those brackets at the end of color hsv. Okay, and uh, that's everything we need for the input manager. All right, so now we've got that done, we can create our input manager game object, create a new one, new empty object. Okay, and we'll just call that input manager. Okay, and then we'll just drag our input manager script onto it. Oh, I might not have made that game object. Okay, I just need to make this public. Public Q game object Q prefab. Okay, that should pop up. Now I'd create our, we'll create our cube prefab by just dragging it into the assets folder. Dragging our cube in there. Dragging our cube in there. Okay, and then deleting the instance of it. And okay, there's our cube. We can drag it into our input manager. All right. Now uh, this is some. This is a part of the part of the project we can test without. This doesn't require any AR. So we can just use the regular Unity remote uh, for you know developing Android apps. One thing we need to do before we do that is just go into Project Settings Editor. By default, this device setting is going to be on None. So make sure you select any Android device. Okay, and then when we go into the into the uh, into your device and just hit the uh, Unity Remote button or Unity Remote app rather, you can see if you can hit. Oh wait. One thing I forgot to do here was actually just set up the scene for this little test of our of our functionality. So how we can do that is we just create a new plane. You know, this is just going to be like a test plane. We'll delete it in a moment. Uh, move our main camera up a little bit. That should be fine. That's plenty. So now when we hit play, we should be able to see that and be able to test out our functionality. Okay, yeah, it's all kind of working how we want it. No real problems. Uh, now, yeah, now we can now we can go see if it works in AR. Okay, and now just make sure we move that camera back to uh, reset it back to the middle, delete the plane, and now the last thing we need to do is just add a collider to our our uh, our surface our surface prefab because at the moment yeah at the moment it's got none so so it just means that like any physics objects will just fall straight through it. Okay, yeah, I've already added one here, but all, all you've got to do is remove that. So you just go add component, mesh collider, like that. Yep, yep, all looks good. Uh, th th remember, because we're creating our mesh procedurally, we're going to need to assign it to the collider procedurally, and also we're going to need to reassign it every time, because it's like a dynamic mesh, right? The planes like change over time, so every time that happens, we need to reassign the collider as well. So we just jump into our service script. It's a little bit similar to the mesh renderer. We just go mesh collider, mesh collider, right? And then same as the mesh renderer, make sure we assign that. So mesh collider equals get component mesh collider, okay? And then finally, we just need to make sure every time our mesh changes, we just say uh, mesh collider dot uh, shared mesh, oh, shared mesh equals mesh. Okay, so just reassigning every time we do that. Um, yeah, there's something that Mesh Collider needs to do because I think it recalculates a, a few values every time it's reassigned. So yeah, just to make sure we do that. Okay, and yeah, that should be good to go now. So then we can build it. All right, so here we are. Okay, we got our plane. Should be, oh, there we go, planes appearing as usual. Now when we tap on the screen, we've got all these little cubes coming down. Okay, let's see if I can get in there and get real good at this. Okay, so I've got to like add it right there, right? Okay, that's two. Oh, yeah, it's, it's actually, it's kind of tricky. Yeah, they've got a lot of impact when they hit. Like they're sort of uh, really, really bouncy, but yeah, I mean, there's so many things we could do. We could, we could work on the, uh, on, the, on the physics material, you know, make them more or less slidey. We can work on, maybe if we had them really heavy, they wouldn't, they wouldn't be as likely to move over. And yeah, again, also we can change the size. Yes, yeah, so there's so many you know ideas of ways you can sort of work on this. But um, yeah, I'd love I'd love to see if anyone makes anything like this, anything similar. Yeah, good stuff.